the Université de Laval, who will be the one presenting today. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, so uh, let's go. So here's a brief presentation uh, plan. So I'll start by uh, talking about Quebec City, and then I'll get into Université Laval, so the general overview, uh, our study programs, the uh, research excellence, student services, and everything concerning admission and registration process. So Université Laval is located in Quebec City. So we are um, about a three hour drive north of Montreal, and we are probably around uh, nine hours uh, north of uh, New York City. So uh, Quebec City is the capital of the province of Quebec. So uh, there are more than seven, uh, 750,000 inhabitants in, in, the, um, in the city. Université Laval is a UNESCO World Heritage Site especially for our old Quebec, old city, which is, uh, we are more than 400 uh, years old. It is a cultural and technological center. So there's a lot of uh, different companies here in Quebec City. And there are a lot of large green spaces a few uh, minutes from the city center. We are about maybe a 24, uh, 25 minute drive from uh, different uh, ski slopes. Also, we have a lot of uh, forests. Uh, Quebec City was named the best city in Canada according to travel and leisure. So here it says 2018, but we also got it for 2019. And it is one of the safest cities in the country. So it's you can walk around uh, downtown Quebec City and in the middle of the night and you're perfectly safe. Also, right now, there is a high employment rate, so our population is aging uh, uh, quickly, so we need a lot of um, new people to take their place. So, Université Laval, it is the first French language university in all of North America. We were founded in 1663, and we are the second uh, all this university in North America after Harvard. So we have more than 350 years of uh, history. So right in front of you, you can see the university campus. So uh, it's a two kilometer square um, campus. You can, everything is walkable. So from going one uh, one end of the campus to the other end, it's maybe a 10 minute walk. It, it is divided in the four uh, sections. So the southern section is all uh, concerning services offered for students. The northern section, it's everything concerning sports. So our big sports facility is in that sector. In the eastern part, it's everything concerning uh, social sciences and humanities. And finally, the Western section is more for science and engineering and health sciences. So, Maria, if you can please click on the, uh, the video that I'd like to show you. À l'origine de cet arbre centenaire, il y a la volonté de préserver nos ressources. À l'origine de cette volonté, il y a la forêt Montmorency la plus grande forêt d'enseignement au monde. Il y a une vision porteuse du développement durable. À l'origine de ce regard confiant, il y a une meilleure compréhension du cerveau. À l'origine de cette compréhension, il y a un centre de recherche novateur en neurophotonique. Il y a une équipe de chercheurs passionnés. À l'origine de ce couple serein, il y a une retraite savamment planifiée. À l'origine de cette planification, Il y a des heures de calcul mathématique. Il y a une école d'actuariat unique au Canada. À l'origine de ce succès, il y a un processus de réflexion et de création approfondie. À 
l'origine de ce processus, il y a des chercheurs et des artistes avides de création. Il y a un laboratoire audio-numérique à la fine pointe de la technologie. À l'origine de ces tonnerres d'applaudissements, il y a une victoire en finale de championnat. À l'origine de cette victoire, il y a des étudiants athlètes qui ont soif de se surpasser. Il y a le plus grand complexe sportif universitaire de l'Est canadien. Et à l'origine de tant de réalisations, de réflexions, de percées, de talents, de victoires, il y a un acteur du progrès depuis 350 ans. So sorry about the, the language, it was in French, but it gives you a pretty good idea of what the campus uh, looks like. So like I said, Universidad Laval has more than 350 years of history, so we've had a lot of notable graduates uh, since then. Mostly we have had a lot of uh, Canadian and Quebec uh, um, prime ministers for one, and also a lot of uh, professors who are world-renowned. We also have seven Supreme Court, uh, of, Supreme Court of Canada uh, justice and uh, university rectors. So University Laval, it's more than 43,000 students and about a quarter of those are at the graduate level, so for master's and PhD uh, programs. Uh, out of those 43,000 students, we have more than 7,000 international students that come from 120 different countries. So when the University of Laval was founded, it only had four faculties, but now we are up to 17 different faculties. So we offer pretty much Uh, all uh, all types of programs in all of uh, different fields of interest. So we have 500 study programs and, around, and maybe around 250 different programs for the master and PhD level. So University of Laval, it's more than 3,800 different professors, lecturers, and other teaching and research staff. Uh, so we offer, uh, <coughs> sorry, we offer financial aid for one out of four students in the form of different scholarships and compensation. And finally, uh, University of Laval is ranked third in Canada's satisfaction for students by, by McLean's. Also, we are ranked in the top 20 of uh, Francophone universities uh, across the world. So I think right now we're up to uh, 315,000 uh, graduates uh, worldwide. Uh, like I said, the university, it's uh, two, two kilometers square mile, and it's a lot of green spaces. So around 60% of the campus is uh, different cycling or, or walking baths. And we are the first Canadian university that is carbon neutral. The campus is around 40 different buildings that are all connected by footpaths, and this, which is interesting for you guys, we have underground tunnels. So that's uh, pretty interesting since uh, during the winter time, You can uh, go about different buildings without ever stepping outside, and especially if you're living in one of our campus residences. So this is just to give you an idea of our different uh, classes and uh, laboratories. So we have different trading rooms at our Faculty of Business Administration. Uh, this is more of a regular classroom, so it gives you an idea. Uh, we have a lot of laboratories in all of our different uh, buildings. A lot of public spaces. So for one, all of our buildings, we have cafeterias, uh, study, uh, study spaces. So uh, like I said previously, it's more than 500 different uh, study programs. And all in all of these different fields, so in health sciences, in science, technology, and engineering, 
We have a lot of unique programs in forest sciences, in agriculture, and nutrition. Then we have pro programs in social sciences, humanities, and political sciences, also in economics. We have a faculty of law. We have a faculty of education, like a, a administrative, administrative sciences. And finally, we have arts, literature, languages, and also a faculty of music. So at the graduate, the uh, sorry, the undergraduate level, we over ninety percent of our bachelor's degree include a mandatory or optional internships. So that's something especially interesting for you guys. If you, after that, you consider staying in in the country for work, it gives you um, some a certain work experience before you can apply. Also, there are different student profiles. So uh, our most popular is the international profile, but we also have sustainable development, honors, entrepreneurials, for those who'd like to start their own business, and finally, a research uh, profile. We have agreements with more than 520 institutions uh, uh, in uh, 70 countries. So, you, and usually these agreements vary depending on the program, the study program. We have close to 1,000 students that, that go, our students that go study abroad for one or two semesters during their program. And we have 5,600 students from abroad that come to Quebec City to University Laval for one uh, study semester. So that's something that you are, you can have when you are here. If, even if you are an exchange uh, a student, an international student, you can still do the international profile and go abroad somewhere else from your original country and do a semester uh, abroad. Universal is in the top 20 best university uh, in Canada in terms of research. So we have more than 275 research centers, chairs, institutes, and other research groups uh, on campus. We have four Canada, Canada Excellence Research Chairs, which I will um, come back in a few minutes. We invest more than 357 million uh, per year in different research funds. And in the last few years, uh, we received a Canadian, uh, we were awarded by the Canadian government $98 million to develop the Sentinel North project, which uh, is a multidisciplinary research program in the field of Arctic science, optics and photonics, uh, cardio metabolic and mental health. So this is just a few examples of our major research projects that are going about right now. So we have Alliance Santé Québec, which is a pioneering research and innovation in the health and social service fields in the greater Quebec City area. We have the International Observatory on the Societal Impacts of Artificial Intelligence and Digital Technology. We have Alliance Culture Numérique uh, that brings together organizations, businesses, individuals with common interests in developing projects that link culture and digital uh, technology. Uh, Sentinel North that I just missed, mentioned a few minutes ago, and also we have Institut Nordique du Québec uh, that brings together the best talent in northern research to foster innovation and creates synergy between researchers and the community communities that benefit from their work. As I mentioned, we have four Canada Excellence Research Chairs. So I think we are the only university, well, in the province, and I think maybe in the whole country that has four different Excellence Research Chairs. We have the Photonic Innovations for Information and Communications. We have uh, Microbiome Endocannabinoid Noidome excess in metabolic health. We have one in neurophotonics. And finally, one in remote sensing of Canada's new Arctic frontier. 
So just to show you a few of our uh, world-renowned world research centers and institutes. So we have the Center for Optics, Photonics, and Lasers. So we are renowned worldwide for our research in that field. Same goes for the uh, Nutraceuticals and Functional Food Institute. We have the Center Apprentice in the Health Sciences Complex. So it, it's a, it's interesting for students at the bachelor's degree. So in our Faculty of Medicine, Faculty of Pharmacy, and Faculty of Nursing. So students literally learn by simulations. So they will um, practice on uh, electronic mannequins. So we have more than 30 learning laboratories in that uh, department. Uh, we have a laboratory for new image, sound, and stage uh, technologies, the Lantis. The Forex Consumption Consortium uh, is a partnership between forest products industry uh, stakeholders that aims um, to be an international standard recognized for the, its achievements and collaboration dynamics. We have the Institut de Québec en Environnement, Développement et Société. And you have the four research themes right there. So water, biodiversity, climate changes, cities and territories, and governance. OK, so different student services. So everything is available on campus. The only thing we don't have on campus is a pharmacy but we are a 10 minute walk from um, three big shopping malls. So you can walk there to get uh, those products if you need them. Otherwise on campus, we have two different libraries. So we have the general library with more than 6 million different documents. And also we have a scientific library. You have access to a medical clinic. We have uh, personal and professional orientation services, student residences. I will come back to that in a few minutes. Uh, it's possible to do different social cultural activities with our uh, the student life office, uh, sportive activities, scholarships and financial support, our employment, uh, our um, service de placement is uh, one of the best uh, placement services uh, in Canada. And uh, also you have free Wi-Fi uh, on all of the campus. So our sports facility is the largest complex in all of uh, Eastern Canada. So what's interesting for you guys is once you are a full-time student, you have um, free access to that complex, which includes two Olympic size pools. We have two ice rinks. So if you want to try uh, skating or uh, hockey, we also have an indoor football stadium and an American style uh, football stadium uh, outside. Also, if you're interested in practicing uh, racquetball, tennis, badminton, you can uh, have access to these uh, uh, facilities. Also, we have different uh, varsity teams, which we call the uh, Rouge et clubs. So we have different 14 different sports teams and more than 475 student athletes. If you're ever interested in, in being part of a varsity team, first thing you'd have to do is contact the coach. So what's interesting for all of you international students is once you are uh, you arrive here on campus, the student life office offer a lot of different activities to uh, facilitate your integration on campus. So first we have welcome services. Also you have, they will offer campus tours as well as uh, city tours. Also you can be paired with a uh, Quebec student with, within the study uh, student body program, so they can show you around. Uh, there is an international student handbook on their website that you can uh, uh, 
go through. There's a lot of information, uh, useful useful information in that book. And uh, throughout the year, the Student Life Office offer a lot of different activities. So for one, during the fall, right now, you, they can bring you to um, the Ile d'Orléans where you can go uh, apple picking. And during the, um, the spring, you you can uh, go to uh, the sugar shack, which is a traditional thing to do here in Quebec. Uh, and also, we have different conferences, as you can see. So, how to adapt to a new culture, an introduction to the Quebec culture, and also they give advice on, uh, for instance, how to clothe for the winter season. Uh, for those of you who do not speak French fluently, well, we offer a lot of uh, different uh, courses and programs in our School of Language. So either uh, courses that you follow during the year or you can follow intensive French courses during the summertime. So it's a uh, five day a week, uh, all day. So you, you learn French pretty quickly. For students who are, for graduate students admitted to a um, master's or a PG program, you have access to our workshops, uh, Dream in French. And also you can have a scholarship that uh, to help you pay for those courses. Um, so here's an idea of the budget you would uh, have to pay for tuition fees. So I put here for the, mainly for masters and PhD. So for the masters programs, uh, it's around fourteen thousand per year to pay for your tuition fees. And then you have close to well, $936 to pay for health and uh, hospital insurance, which is obligatory once you arrive here on campus. And then it's just an estimation. So for housing and food, around $8,500. And for personal expenses, uh, around $3,700. So basically for one year at the master's level, uh, you'd have to, it's close to $27,000. What's interesting is for students who are admitted into a PhD program, you are automatically, uh, you have access to our an exemption scholarship. So you will pay the same tuition fees as a Quebec student. So instead of paying 14,000, you'd pay around 2,500. So it's uh, really interesting for PhD students. Okay, here's just a look of the different uh, procedures for an admission, uh, which I will go in more detail. So step one, obviously, is sele selecting the program that you are interested in. So you can go to the address ulaval.ca slash, uh, it should, in, it's in French, unfortunately. So uh, on that website, you can check all the admission requirements, depending on which program you're interested in. So if you meet the requirements, uh, next step, uh, well, if you're looking for a research-based program, so for a master's with thesis or a PhD, you'd have to contact professors to see who would be able to uh, supervise your research. So basically, you have to contact by email, send your uh, resume, your uh, university transcripts, and if you have maybe one or two uh, recommendation letters. And it's important to, before contact professors, to read about their different uh, publications. And you have to demonstrate how your research interest uh, goes with their uh, expertise. So once that is done, then you apply online. So you go to ulaval.ca slash admission. You, you will... Uh, fill out the application form, and at the end of the application, you can send in all your documents. So your transcript, diplomas, and then depending on the program, either motivation letter, your resume, reference letters. There is an application fee. Right now, it's up to, it's $87 Canadian uh, that you can pay easily with a credit card. 
and then you will be able to track your application. You will receive from the registrar's office an email that will give you your access to your application. Uh, so I mentioned uh, for one, the uh, PhD students, you have the exemption uh, scholarship. It is possible you could check out the leadership and sustainable development scholarships. So you have the address at the top of the page. That's something that may be interesting uh, for students who are actively involved in social, humanitarian, artistic, environmental sports or uh, scientific uh, activities. And then at the uh, master's level, you may qualify for, well, the graduate studies awards. And also uh, there is an exemption program, uh, the what we call the master's level merit scholarship. So you will find all that information on the uh, scholarship office uh, website. After that, if you are admitted into the program, excellent, you accept your offer and then you need to apply for the immigration papers. So you have two documents to go get. First, the CAQ, the Quebec Acceptance Certificate. It, you can do that online. So if you if you see down on the page, it's ulaval.ca slash immigration. It takes about um, five weeks to get the CAQ, and then you can apply for the Canadian study permit. And then, so it's about three months to get all your documents in order uh, before you can arrive here. Uh, just one thing I wanted to mention before, because I didn't see the slide concerning our campus residences. So we have four different uh, residences on campus. Uh, right now, it's uh, $360 per month. They are individual rooms, but you have common bathrooms and kitchens. And at that price, you ha it comes with, um, it's, you have internet, you have phone, and electricity. So it's really not expensive for a, uh, university residences. You, you will find more information at the address residence.ulaval.ca. And that's all for me. So if you have any questions, well, you can write on the chat right now, or otherwise you can always contact me later on. You have got my phone number there and as, as well as my email. Also, you can uh, subscribe to our info letter if you want to have more information concerning the university. So thank you for uh, your attention. Do you have any questions? Okay, somebody asked the questions if we offer uh, master programs in English in the fields of social sciences or political sciences. Unfortunately, no, they are French programs. However, it may be possible, depending on the, on the program, and especially if you're, you want to do a research-based program, it is possible to write your thesis in English. So, but you have to get an approval from the... Uh, your research supervisor. But it is more common at, at, at the PhD level as well as uh, master programs, but more in uh, uh, sciences, engineering, and health sciences. But all more in our social sciences and humanities, it's more in French. Okay, somebody asked if all of the programs are in English and French. Uh, they are. Uh, I think 95% of our programs are given in French. We have our, for those at the undergraduate level, we offer our bachelor's in business administration. It's a bilingual program. So the first half can be done in either French or English, but the second part, so will be given in French. But by then you will have uh, followed French courses to be able to follow them. At the master's level, we do offer one MBA, it's our MBA Global Business, that's given entirely in English. 
Otherwise, all of our other programs are given in French. But like I said, it is possible to do your research in English and write your thesis in English. Um, okay, somebody asked if the uh, academic requirements of a master's in accounting. Uh, no, the GRE is not uh, necessary. It's more at the PhD level that they will ask a, a GRE and or a, and or a GMAT. Uh, and for the French equivalents, I'd say usually you need a level of B2. So if you do the DELF or DELF. Uh, and the same thing for next question. So the required French level for a ma uh, master's in engineering, it's usually around a B2. However, like I said, it may be easier, even with a, a lower level of French, you could still be admitted into a research-based program. But at the uh, bachelor's degree level, you would likely be admitted but into a French immersion program. Okay, somebody asked the, uh, the cost for the undergraduate programs it is a little bit more expensive than at the master's level it, it depends on the program but it will vary around per year around eighteen thousand to twenty thousand so depending on which program you're interested in okay somebody asked has uh, work concerns if uh, the city is in French, uh, yeah, it, it is a French environment. A lot of people are bilingual. So, I mean, if you go in shops or in restaurants, you can be answered in English, but it, it does remain a French environment. But for, for those of you who want to learn French, it's the best, uh, it's the best aspect. You, you will be immersed completely in a French environment, so you will learn French more quickly that way uh okay next question is there a master program for prothesis engineering oh boy that's a very good question uh, we do offer a master's in materials engineering so i'm not that's probably in that field that you could uh, see what you're looking for uh Okay, next question. Somebody asked if the DELF is required for the application application at a PhD. Yeah, we do uh, accept the DELF uh, French test as long as you do a uh, comprehensive, uh, uh, I'm sorry, as long as it has the uh, re written comprehension uh, aspect of the test. Okay, somebody else says uh, if they can apply for the PhD scholarship at the same time as the application. So if you are referring to the exemption, exemption fee scholarship, you, you don't apply for it. Um, first, you have to be admitted into the program. If you are admitted, then they will send you the information on how to well get the scholarship, but there's not an application required. If you're looking for other types of scholarships, you can get some scholarships with your research supervisor or sometimes a faculty has different scholarships. In those cases, yeah, probably you'd have to apply uh, separately from your um, program application. Okay. Uh, is there any programs related to uh, IT? Yeah, we have a lot of programs uh, in IT. So obviously we have, um, at the undergraduate level, we have a bachelor's degree in computer science. We have computer engineering. We have software engineering. Um, what else do we have? We have a program in animation. So for people who'd like to develop uh, video games, that's something that we offer. We have bioinformatics, we have statistics, and well, 
So I mentioned those for the bachelor's degree, but we have equivalents at the master's and the PhD level as well. Uh, anything related to power electronics or applied math? Uh, well, in math, yeah, we do have bachelor's, master's, and PhD in mathematics, in statistics, in biostatistics. And electronics, well, we have programs in uh, electrical engineering. So that's probably in that field or in uh, computer science. Uh, when can I apply for a scholarships? Each scholarship may vary. So like I said, you, you, you have to read the different information on the uh, uh, website. So it's bbaf.ulaval.ca. So the dates to apply may vary with each of the programs. Uh, is the university offering EAC or DEC programs? No, those are not university programs. Those are, are offered in CEGEP, which is pre-university uh, institutions. So right here in Quebec City, we uh, have, I think, four different CEGEP. So we have CEGEP Saint-Foy, CEGEP Yarnaud, Cégep Limoilou, for instance. So you can always check those out if you're looking for an EAC or DEC. Uh, next question. How can we apply to a scholarship if uh, my last exam, which was DELF B2 and validity in December 2019? How can I apply? Uh, well, it depends when you apply. If you apply for next fall so to start a program in uh, september i mean you could always apply right now for the program so right now your uh, delf is still uh, available usually those tests are good for two years but if you do apply after your two years you'd have to pass it once more so but if you're looking to apply for next summer or next fall i mean you can right now and just send in right now your uh, your Delft results so you're you'd be okay and uh, next question my may I know about the requirements of an academic records for the masters of accountant uh, okay so uh, usually no a work experience is not uh, required it may depend on the program we do have an MBA in accounting so that program doesn't ask for a work experience they will look at your transcripts so they will look from at the end of your high school and all your university uh, transcripts you, you still need to send in a resume and a letter of motivation but it's not required to have a professional experience in that case and, and that is that applies for most of our MBA programs. No uh, work experience is required. Okay, somebody asked, what is the application period? So we have two main semesters. And so the fall semester for international students, it is highly recommended that you apply before February 1st. It, if you're looking for an admission for fall to 2020, you can apply right now. It is, uh, the applications are open. Uh, if you are applying for the winter semester that starts in mid-January, of course, it is too late for uh, winter 2020. But if you'd like to start for winter 2021, you have to apply before September 15th of 2020. We also have a summer uh, semester. Not all programs are available during the summertime, but there's a lot of PhD programs, for instance, that can admit in the summertime. In that case, the deadline is January 15th to start in May of 2020. I hope that answers your question. And just to remind you guys, you go to our website so ulaval.ca slash future students all the information is in english in, in that portion of our website so you will have all the info 
concerning admissions, uh, um, immigration, registration. So everything is available on that uh, on that page. So I repeat, it's ulaval.ca slash future students. Okay, next question. Okay, uh, some, well, I already answered that question. Somebody asked if a GRE is necessary. It's only, um, the only program that uh, needs the, a GRE is if you apply for a PhD in business administration. So finance, accounting, marketing, management, those programs will ask the GRE, but no other program will, uh, needs that uh, document. So they basically look at your transcripts and diplomas and uh, depending on the program, resume or letter of motivation and uh, reference letters. Okay, somebody asked, what are the requirements for uh, foreign students? Uh, well, I'd say it depends on the program, but usually the, the <coughs> I mean, admission is basically based on grades. So I'd say you have to have maybe a, an average grade of 75% to be admitted in our programs. And it's, you have to have the minimum diploma required. So if you want to be admitted into a master's program, you have to have at least a bachelor's degree. If you want to be admitted into a PhD program, you have to have a minimum of a master's degree. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, okay, next question. How can I apply for PhD scholarships in administration? What are the requirements? And this degree could be recognized in Lima by the National Superintendents of Education. Uh, sometimes there are problems to recognize degrees from other countries. When the degree is obtained, the document must have the signature of the rector only or of some authority of the Canadian state. Uh, I do the consultation because sometimes for details here in this SUNY do, do not recognize foreign documents because they are not official. Okay, that's a very good question. As far as our uh, Faculty of Business Administration, we have uh, two different, uh, um, oh, how do I, uh, what's the term? Accreditations. So we have uh, the ICIS and the A. AACSB accreditations. So we are recognized as uh, one of the top 100 uh, business schools in all of, of um, the world. F uh, furthermore, all of our programs are approved by the uh, government. So which means that all the programs that you will do here, they should be recognized globally. Of course, that depends if you if the, um, the job that you want to do in your country, if it's part of a professional order, obviously you have to go through your order to see if an equivalency is required. But um, especially in your case, uh, you'd have to, con I'd say probably you have to contact the faculty directly to see, because I'm not too keen on diplomas what I'm, I'm not. Sh you can probably if you need the a letter of a uh, the university rector. Probably it's possible to get one, but probably that's something you'd have to discuss either with the faculty or the registration, uh, the bureau de registration. So the registrar's office. They would be more suited to answer that question than I can. Uh. Okay, next question, is there an age limit for PhD students? No, there is not. Like I said, application is based on grades. So, I mean, uh, in a, a few years ago, uh, I remember we had a student, well, it wasn't at the PhD level, he completed a bachelor's degree in, chi in chemistry. He was 85 years old, so uh, there is no age limit to start a program. Everything is based on grades. If you have the requirements to be admitted into the program, you will be admitted. It's not a question of age. 
Uh, okay, so I think I've gone through all of the questions. Do you have uh, any other questions or did I miss one? I think I've answered them all, but let me know. And if you have any further questions, like I said, you can see on the screen, you have my phone number and you can write to info at ulaval.ca. Just mention that you you talked to me during our uh, web conference and uh, they will transfer your email, your questions to me directly. Okay, somebody is typing. Not a problem, Raul. Okay, uh, here's another question. May I live on campus if I come with my family? So wife and two children. Unfortunately, our campus residences, it's for a, it's a one person uh, residence. So it's, there are small rooms, it's fit for one person only. So if you come with your family, you would be better suited to try to find either an apartment uh, around campus. There's a lot of different, some houses, they, they will uh, rent out either rooms or uh, basements for students, or you can easily find an apartment uh, at a walking distance from campus, but you won't be able to, to live on campus with your family since it's individual rooms. Well, one detail I forgot to mention, you guys, when you are a full-time student here at, uh, at Université Laval, you are allowed to, to work up to 20 hours either on, on campus or off campus. So for those, uh, well, if you're doing a, ma a research master's or PhD, you might not have that much time to work as well. But especially for people who are interested in, in a bachelor's degree, you are allowed to, to work up to 20 hours on campus or off campus. But usually uh, our, our courses, uh, it's around three hours of class per week, and, but you have to do around six hours of personal work and studies each week. So to be a full-time student, you have to be registered for at least 12 credits, which usually means uh, four courses per semester. They are 15 week uh, courses. So it, for the fall semester, it begins at the beginning of September. It will end around mid uh, December. Then you have a full month off. So no studies, you can, you can go back home if you want or just stay here and uh, work or relax. And then the winter semester will, will start at the mid January until the end of April. And then if you stay here, like I said, for a full-time student, you have to be do at least 12 credits per semester for the winter and fall semester. But during the summer semester, it's not a requirement. So if you just want to work full-time, you are allowed to do so. Okay, somebody asked, the Master of Accounting and Finance is with thesis or another well uh, we have both we have an mba in accounting it's not a, well it's an mba so it's not a research based uh, master program but we do have a research masters in accounting same thing for finance we have an mba in finance and we have a research based masters in finance so the main difference between research and mba is the research you will have to find a research supervisor uh, to be admitted into the program. Any other questions? Oh, 
this. Okay, so Philip asked, how can you obtain a scholarship? Uh, like I said, each scholarship depends, uh, may vary. So go to bbaf.ulaval.ca. I mean, there's a lot of different scholarships available. So it depends on what you're interested in. But uh, usually you apply online. Somebody else is writing a question. My pleasure, Diego. Any other questions? Okay. I'm listening, Teresa. <clears throat> My pleasure, Omar. Uh, which program in economics has more English lectures? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I'll just let me check really quickly. It's not at the bachelor's degree level, so uh, let me just check. Okay, so uh, for economics, it's not necessarily that you have access to English uh, lectures. It's more at the PhD level, you're allowed to write your thesis in English and do your research in English. But it's likely that the the few courses that you have to follow, you don't have that many to follow, but probably they will be in, in French. If I look at the master's level, the master's with the uh, C, Thesis, sorry. Well, uh, both. So either the professional masters and the research masters, you would be able, um, you would be allowed to write your uh, thesis in English. But the courses they will be most likely will all be given in French. Uh, I would like to know if I can take the French exam there. Well, I mean, it depends on uh, <laughs> if the French requirement is required for admission. So, I mean, if if you're applying for a program to start in September 2020 and you have to show them in advance your level of French, you won't be able to wait until you arrive here to pass a test. So you have to pass a test from where you are right now. So either the TFI the Delph or the Delph, uh, but otherwise, if if it's not a requirement to start the program, yes, once you arrive here, you could pass a French test. Uh, okay, somebody asked for architecture, but I'm not, I'm not sure what the question is. It's if the question is concerning English uh, lectures, uh, let me check. But I, I believe that program you're not even al allowed to write in English. Just give me a sec. Okay, so if that was the question for architecture, unfortunately, you'd really have to have. A, a B2 level of uh, French to be admitted. You are likely not allowed to write your thesis in, in English for architecture. Okay, somebody asked, uh, can we, I repeat the image uh, of the cost? Uh, I'll give you the, uh, the link for our website. Uh, just give me a sec. Do I have written here? You will find that information at ulaval.ca slash 
future student. But I, th I, I can I can go back to the uh, the screen here. Here was the screen for the budget. So I hope that answer your question. And as I mentioned, for the bachelor's degree, it's between eighteen thousand and uh, twenty thousand, uh, depending on the program. Uh, so yeah, uh, Teresa, a level of B2, usually you would be admitted in pretty much any program uh, with a B2 in the Delft. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, somebody asked if it's possible to get a teaching assistantship that could cover all expenses I'd say probably not cover all expensive, but expenses, but it's likely it would be possible to get a teaching assistantship depending on the program. That's something you have to discuss with your research supervisor. But like I said, at the PhD level, at least you have an exemption scholarship. So you pay the same tuition fees as a Quebec student, which is $2,500, but you can, get additional um, financing depending on the program. That's really something you have to discuss with your future research supervisor. So in some fa some faculties, um, notably faculty of medicine, they do a lot of research in uh, bio biomedical uh, research and they do uh, have a lot of financing. Also, we have a lot of financing um, in computer science, for instance, in artificial intelligence, in uh, big data research. So that's something you could uh, look into if those are your um, your, your field of interest. Uh, okay, so, and to finish with your question, so for uh, teaching assistant, assistantship, probably won't start at the first year, maybe more in the second year. Because, I mean, you still have to start the program before. So probably likely for the second year, you'd have access to that. But then again, that's something to discuss with your research supervisor. Okay. I'm still getting a, a few questions. Okay. So Teresa, for the master's in uh, molecular uh, biology, a B2, you're fine as far as the French requirements won't be a problem and I think in that case you will even be allowed to write your uh, your uh, thesis in English uh, one interesting thing I mentioned I forgot to mention you guys when you apply on our website your documents we do accept them in either French English or even Spanish so for those languages you don't have to have them translated if for another language, however, you would have to have a certified translation to send for your application. Uh, okay, Cynthia asks, can you work with a student visa? Yes, you are allowed to uh, work up to 20 hours per week, either on campus or off campus, as long as you are a full-time student. So you are allowed to do that. But keep in mind, usually, just your studies, it's around probably 45 hours per week dedicated to your studies. So if you have around 50 to 20 hours of work as well, those are pretty pretty uh, busy weeks. But yes, yes, it is possible. You will find more information regarding everything concerning immigration. Go to ulaval.ca slash immigration. And that, that page is available in English as well. And even for, for your information, I forgot to mention our future students page, it's also available in Spanish. So go to ulaval.ca slash future students and uh, on the top right corner, you can uh, switch to Spanish. Okay, anything else? I think I've answered all questions. Mm 
Okay, so it looks pretty quiet. I think I've answered all questions at the moment. So like I said, I'll pull back my uh, info. So you can always contact me later on if you have more uh, questions. Oh, somebody else is typing. It was my pleasure to do this presentation, so thank you for your attention.